Hey, Gary, What's thanks up? for having me on here. Of course, Paul. How are you? I'm doing awesome. I appreciate your messaging. It's helped me be a better dad, a dentist, and my company, uh, Dental Nachos. But I have a special person, the most important person to me. I want to come out, have on and say thanks to you real quick. Please. Hey, Gary B. How are you? Great. So nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you as well. I'm Mary, otherwise known as Mrs. Nacho. I just wanted to thank you for being such an inspiration to our company, but also us personally. We love your message on kindness and you're, you're just thank awesome. You. Thank Thanks you so, so much, much for saying that. I wish you well. Thank Thanks you, Mrs. So much. Nacho. You're awesome. Welcome. So Gary, we I uh, founded Dental Nachos. Our Facebook group has twenty five thousand members. Hopefully, they're watching in. Your patients can wait, guys, for five minutes. Uh, so uh, one of the things that I have a challenge with with Dental Nachos. Well, first, I actually want to thank you for the best thing that happened during the pandemic. About a year ago, I was at the beach in New Jersey. I'm a forty two year old from New Jersey, and I signed up for your community text platform. And I said, I need this for Dental Nachos. If I see Gary V has it, Mark Cuban, my favorite comedian, Sebastian Maniscalco. But uh, I made a little thing for you here in Philly, uh, in the movie Philadelphia, explain it to me like I'm a four-year-old. So gratitude plus patience plus kindness plus document not produce equals success. Because we were, we were patient and a month ago we got approved for community. So now I can communicate with my dental nacho group all the time. Uh, so our, our community is built on helping dentists make big life decisions that dental school ignores. You know, how to buy a practice, how to find your first job, what I call the circle of dentisting life. And makes sense. Thanks. We, we built out this platform a lot like Peloton, in person, CE courses, live stream, and recorded. But everything's shut down right now for in person. And my challenge for you this morning, I think is a tough one, is how do I reach dentists in caves? Dentistry is a cave profession, it means we're isolated, we're stressed, we're in our own islands. And the 50 plus crew, we have a Facebook uh, page, Instagram, LinkedIn, I even joined TikTok, uh, all these different platforms. But how would you reach the 50 plus audience uh, for Dental Nachos? I mean, I, it's email, LinkedIn, and Facebook. What's interesting about dentists, and uh, the reason I'm on here and always lead with gratitude is one of my sponsors, Zyrus, was on the four Ds. I was walking around Philadelphia. I said, hey, that's my sponsor. And uh, just to show your strategies pay off. So they called me, you told them, to bring their, their dentist content that had nothing to do with their product. So they interviewed me and I said, you don't have to pay me, but you just got to get me an intro to Gary V and Mike Wong. I want to thank him for doing that. But I what's interesting that. about dentists, thanks, is that they they don't really use a lot of like my dad was a dentist. I worked for, him with 11, for 11 years before he passed away, unfortunately. He was an awesome dad, but he never really used email or LinkedIn because dentists are this craft profession. I get it. I get yeah. it. I mean, look. If you can't read, if they're if if someone's unreachable, they're unreachable. Like yeah. you know, if if you need to do direct mail, if you need to drive to their practices, like that's just yeah. part of the game. I would argue that an enormous percentage of dentists, even the old school dentists, are at least now on email. Right. You know, I I agree with you. And we we had a nacho nacho delivery team that went around Philadelphia and surrounding areas and would drop off nachos fun for the office because a lot of times their team gets them involved. I would also argue that the 50 year old doesn't need your service the way you pitched it as much because, you know, they could have used it 25 years ago. It probably would have been epic for them. But I would argue that Instagram and TikTok focusing on the 18 to 22 year old in school dentist is just a far, I, I, a lot of times people overvalue someone they can't get and undervalue the opportunity on something they're getting. Gotcha. It, so I, I, to, I agree with you. you see where I'm going? Like it might take the same energy to get one fucking 59 year old dentist as it does to get 88 dental students. And by the way that you positioned it, at least by the way I just heard it, for me, it makes so much sense for a 21, 26, 19 year old dentist, dentists want to be, to have this be part of their life more than the 57 year old who's already kind of like figured a lot of that out. It's a good, I mean, well, a lot of what we talk about our dentists and core, I heard you talk about soft tissue uh, yesterday or the day before. So we talk about developing your core of your mind, how you speak and your clinical hand skills. So that's really resonating with people even before dental school. But in this circle of dentisting life, the older dentist needs the babysitter. They need the associate or the dentist to come in and work with them so they can get more time off. And that's leading to some of the stress. So I'm trying to figure out a way to that's, connect them. I mean, look, to, I think direct mail print, four yeah. or five page pamphlet. Hey everybody, welcome 
to case acceptance training with Dental Nachos, me, Dr. Nacho, as well as Ask Dr. Nacho Anything. These segments are to help you out there at any age or stage of your dentisting journey. Ask me anything. I'll be glad to share my thoughts. I also maybe can learn from you. Please feel free to share your comments in the, the, your questions in the Q&A. That's the easiest place for me to see them. My awesome team is watching in here. So I want to share some content about case acceptance. I have this um, photo up from just a couple of days ago at Seager Park. Keep shooting your treatment planning shots. Some will miss. The ones you make will help change the lives of everyone in your office, including you. So if you're watching in with us live or you're watching this on demand, think of some things that prevent case acceptance in your office, some things that make you uncomfortable. And I have my list here for my awesome team of Ask Dr. Nacho Anything. So I'll just answer a few questions that have been submitted to us about people's dentisting journey and how we can answer them. I also would love if you share in the chat. I know you can do it if we're here in person. I would call on you. How many years have you been out of dental school? So just share how many years you've been out of dental school. And if you're an associate practice or in the chat, I know you can do it. We have a lot of people watching in. So just go into the chat, put in panelists and attendees. So we all get to know each other. I will start. I am Paul, practice owner, 19 years out of dental school. So feel free to share too. So first question we have here is, if I have a restrictive covenant, if I have a restrictive covenant, but I have a great opportunity to purchase a practice near my current one. Is there a way to get out? So restrictive covenants. There's a lot of talk about are restrictive covenants legal. But right now, if you have a restrictive covenant and you try to get a bank loan, we help people buy practices, they will not consider you if you're within your restrictive covenant. So you need to have a conversation with the owner of that practice, whoever asked this question, and say, hey, and it's going to be an uncomfortable one. Uncomfortable conversations can be tough. I'd like to purchase a practice eight miles away. I know my restrictive covenant is 10 miles away. Would you support that? They might say no. Then you might have to ask, try to buy your way out of that restrictive covenant. If you fight the legality of it, which people have done, my good friend, Rob Montgomery, podcast partner, dental focus attorney, may help you out. You're going to invest in a legal battle to do that. Doesn't mean it's not worth it. But what I can share with you, take home nacho tip from this is get your contract reviewed by a dental focused attorney before, before you sign them. If you're a practice owner like me, have a dental focused attorney, make those contracts because restrictive covenants can drive you nacho nuts. And if you sign one that is overly broad, it may prevent you from buying a practice later. Really good question. Um, don't everybody share in the chat. And once I know you can do it, my, maybe my nacho team, you guys share in the chat, just, I don't know, share your favorite nacho topic. Uh, normally I love to be face to face, but we're virtual right now. So I know I got a lot of people watching. I see your guys' names. I can call on you like a Mr. Rogers here. I see, I see Daniel, Becca, Caleb, Kimmy, Matthew, Michael, Murad, Robert, you're all here. It's awesome. So if you guys feel like talking to me, that would be great. You can ask a question about anything in your dental life, case acceptance, business of dentistry, transitions, anything, team management. I will be glad to add, answer it. Next question I have here is, uh, how, what is the first step I should take when starting the journey of purchasing a dental practice? First step I should take, really great question. The first step you should take, in my opinion, is start connecting with brokers to JFO, just find out about practices. I'm a dental practice broker. There are not a lot of regulations. So dual representation broker is a huge red flag. They, they claim they can help both you and the buyer, dual rep broker, nacho nuts. No idea how it exists. I think it should be illegal. So if you're buying a dental practice and you connect with a dual representation broker, you have to be extra cautious. Start connecting with brokers just to see practices. Start building your team, a dental focused attorney, a dental focused accountant. Start connecting with banks. Um, I have a question here. You guys like trivia questions? If you want to buy a dental practice, the practice purchase price is $750,000. How much do you need to have saved in liquid assets? for the bank to consider you a good loan, a good risk. So I'll type it here in the chat. Practice purchase price is $750,000. How much do you need saved in non-retirement assets? Savings account, Vanguard accounts, money under your bed. Does anyone want to, we have more people joining us, which is awesome. Does anybody want to guess share how much you need saved. So it's another, so first golden nacho tip, restrictive covenants, get a dental focused attorney to review your contract before you sign it, get a dental focused attorney to make your contract an overly broad restrictive covenant can drive you nacho nuts. Second is 10% of the purchase price, 10% of the purchase price. So in that case, $75,000. So if you only have $8,000 between the money under your bed 
and in your non-retirement accounts, start developing liquid assets. You don't necessarily need to give it to the bank, but to be considered a good risk, 10% of that practice purchase price. So two good tips from Ask Dr. Nacho Anything. The purpose of this is not for me to talk to myself. So it's great that I have these questions here that my team has given to me and put in, but we have awesome people here live on Nacho Zoom TV. That's a real channel to me. So I'm going to play a short video. And while I play this short video, it would be awesome if you shared some questions that I could help you with about in anything in your dental life. Do you want to do more procedures that you enjoy as a dentist? More procedures that patients truly want and not as affected by dental insurance. More fee-for-service dentistry. My name is Paul Dr. Nacho Goodman and I created the Dental Nacho Supreme to help you with just that. Coming up on the Dental Nacho Supreme CE on TV, we have two amazing lectures that are going to help you with cosmetic dentistry, digital photography, and veneers. Things that patients love things that make patients feel better about their smiles, things that we want to do to help our own morale as dentists. To learn more about being part of the Dental Nacho Supreme, just text SUPREME to 215-543-6454. What is cool about it is you can watch these lectures live on CE on TV, but if you miss it because you're at virtual Pilates or you're at work, no worries. You can watch it later as many times as you want until the end of the year. The Dental Nacho Supreme is true on-demand learning to help you anytime, anywhere, be a more successful and less stressed out dentist and human. Okay, so now maybe I will get some interaction. I see more people joining us. Awesome. Here uh, from all over the world, joining us here on Ask Dr. Nacho Anything. So take a look at this tooth, number 13, your premolar. And what I would like you to put in the chat is if this was your tooth, this was your tooth, would you, back to this tooth, would you save it like private premolar Ryan? or rip it out and do something else. So put in, I would save it or rip it out. Put it in the chat. Just go into chat, type it in, save or rip out. Whichever one, this is your tooth, not the patient's. This is your tooth. Would you save this tooth like Private Primo Orion or would you rip it out? Save it like Private Primo Orion or rip it out. Rip it out. Thank you for voting. Appreciate it. Awesome Nacho who writes me nice messages. Thank you. So let's see, okay, someone else. Someone raised their hand, they have a question. Between save, just these are the only options. You can save it or rip it out. You, after you rip it out, you can do something else. But I'm going to walk you through how I go through this. And we got a great question, which will come in for a second. So thank you for voting there. Okay, so great question from our audience. I'm going to read it. This is why I do this Q&A. Saw me on Tea with Gary V. Highlighted my summer. I like to model this after this because most important, I'm talking to you guys. What's the best way to adv add advanced procedures, implants, molar endo, while completing the transition to private practice? Awesome question. Dental school creates a false sense of what's possible to do in the real world of dentistry. It really does without losing your sanity. So first, focus on one extra thing. Golden Nacho tip, one extra thing. My recommendation is extraction bone grafts first to focus on. It's a great skill for a new dentist to know. Just do some, still refer hard ones. But let's just say you're going to focus on endo in this case. You're going to focus on endo. So one, Take CE to learn about endo to select cases properly because one of the biggest challenges is if you select a case that's too hard and you get stuck on a five hour molar, the person who owns the practice is going to be frustrated. The patient's going to be frustrated. The assistant's going to be frustrated. You also are going to be frustrated. Two, learn how to present these cases, learn how to talk about these procedures. Let me get my little guy out here that represents everything. So, success in dentistry has to do with your dentist in core. Here's your dentist in core, this guy. Your mind skills, your word skills, your hand skills. Sorry, that doesn't show up there. Your mind, your words, your hands. So work on your word skills. Work on describing the procedure. Work with the front desk team on the codes. So one, know the clinical parts. Two, know the coding parts. Three, know the troubleshooting parts. Four, look into equipment. Are you going to buy the equipment or the practice owner? It might be something that you want to get with a new dentist discount or a dental student discount to have, then it's yours. It might be something you want the practice owner to get. I have a uh, multiple associates. If they want to learn endo and said, would you buy me the endo step? I would say, likely yes, but tell me a little bit more. Tell me what cases you're going to do. Tell me how we're going to pay back this ROI. So have a good, authentic discussion with the practice owner. If I was a new dentist, I did a multi-year GPR, big fan of GPRs, but if you're, let's say you're in private practice, you don't much extraction experience, get extraction experience. One of our um, 
uh, key resource sponsor, Carl Croner, teaches this CE, hands-on CE. I would invest in going to another country, be safe about everything, and doing hands-on extractions, extraction, bone grafting, socket preservation. So we here, would you save this tooth or would you rip it out? Someone said, great course here. Carl's an amazing guy. So let's say you're going to remove this tooth. If you could remove this tooth and preserve the bone, great starter way to get the site ready to do something next. But this is a real patient that I saw yesterday. So what do I do when I talk about this, talk to this patient? So uh, one of the uh, challenges that dentist, one of the, I'm going to say this right, and I want it to be nice. Dentists prevent case acceptance by saying way too many words. So I say a lot of words to you. I don't say that many words to patients. But before I get this time out, we have another question. This is great. Uh, I know this dentist, he's great. He, we, we text all the time. I appreciate all your texts. Uh, in regards to patient wanting extraction, sock bridge, or implant, how do you handle the questions? How much is this going to cost me? Great question. So I'm going to give you something. One of my new team members watching in. So I work with people because everyone's people. Dentists is people. Patients are people. Grammar, we don't need more about that. My team's people. So the things that I share with you, how to talk to patients, you can use in your real life. So raise your hand if people ask you questions that are annoying, weird, odd. I'm not talking about in the dental office. I'm just talking about in your real life. They ask you questions. They're, they're kind of annoying, frustrating. They should know it already. Sounds like it's confronting. So when someone asks you a question, what's this going to cost me, doc? Let's just say this. That's a great question. A lot of people ask that. I'd want to know it too. Write that down. Remember it every time. That's a great question. A lot of people ask that. I would want to know that too. Then the way it works is the investment in different options on this menu. Everything's a menu. So if we go back to this here, this piece here for this here, I would say here, hey, 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 Mrs. Smith, here's the dental concerns with this tooth. Cavity, deep cavity under crown, like bugs under the rock under a rock in the forest. Bugs have got under the crown and are eating away, like termites, something like that. Bugs, bacteria, cavity. Is there any bone shrinkage, not periodontal disease? Mild to minimum, but not a big deal. So three thing, bad things can happen to a tooth. Cavity, bone shrinkage, break. We're dealing with a cavity issue here. But we do have chances of breaking because I don't know if you went to dental school, but who here thinks that post looks ideal? I don't think that's an ideal post. I don't know when this patient had this done. Lasted for a long time. Also, the bridge on the bottom does not look like it's in good shape. It's also lasted for a long time. Not saying that that's the ideal way to do a bridge, but I just focus on the positive. So if you want to take this home with you and use it tomorrow, maybe you're at your office, when someone comes in and treatment needs has failed, but don't say failed, say needs to be replaced, Say we eat a thousand meals a year. Oh, that bridge lasted eight years. That's 8,000 meals. Good job. It makes the patient feel better. It makes you feel better. So now I'm getting some really great questions in here. So when they say, what does it cost? We break this down to them. I do it on a yellow financial form. So I run through, here's what happens if you do nothing. Dr. John Coyce, awesome dentist, amazing teacher. So I say, hey, Mrs. Smith, if you decide to do nothing, here's what will happen. Bacteria goes deeper under the crown, decay, further decay, further cavity, Swelling, pain, infection, tooth breakage, loss of chewing power. Okay, you want to do something. You can maintain this tooth, not save it. To save this tooth like private premolar Ryan, so dramatic. You can maintain it with a new root canal, a tooth strengthening procedure, which I call buildup, a top hat for the tooth, or a hard hat for the tooth, crown, Dr. Todd Fleischman. But if I said to you, if you do all that work to the tooth, new root canal, build it up, crown, what kind of prognosis does it have? Someone put in the chat. What kind of prognosis does it have? I don't use any dental school terms, but I, I was infected just like you guys. So tell me, what kind of prognosis? Guarded, poor, hopeless. No one's going to say it as a great prognosis. So what I say to the patient is, the chance of this working out well long-term is not predictable. So just, you just write that down. I know all these things. I don't know how to do veneers. We bring Jason Smithson in the Dental Nacho Supreme. I don't know how to take great photography photos and bring Todd Fleiss from the Dental Nacho Supreme. I learn from people too, but I know this stuff. So the chance of that working out well long-term is not predictable. Not hopeless prognosis. Now, what's the other option? Remove it, preserve the bone, and do an implant, bridge, or partial, and go through all those options. And for that great question, I just go over the investment, the cost for each of them. To remove this tooth and replace it with a dental implant, the investment's going to be $4,500. To remove this tooth and do nothing, the investment's going to be $800, or cost be $800. So really great there. Great questions, guys. So I got another question here. This person's super awesome. You are such a nice, uh, not sure. I don't know if people want me to say their name or not. You can type if you can, but I, I really appreciate all the insight from this, this uh, Nacho fan. I've been trying to find ways to communicate what I want from one of my rock star hygienists. Patients sure love her, but I'm trying to get her to create curiosity, engage patients instead of telling what they need. Great. Missing tooth, need an implant, cracked tooth, need a crown. 
which has been a tendency due for 20 years of conditions experiences. How would you approach talking to her and how she's not doing a bad job, but she's going, not going about care the way I want to. Really great, really awesome question. Dental school ruined us, ruined our brains. Just because people give you feedback doesn't mean you stink. Dental school made us feel like we stink when they give us feedback. So say, hey, we'll call this hygienist Kate. Hey, Kate, I love that you're so passionate about helping people, people chew and smile with confidence. One of the things I've been thinking about testing, always use the word test, is presenting things in a little bit of a more creative way. So instead of saying they need a crown, how about we review what happens if they do nothing, right? Let's just use this example of a broken top part of the tooth. Hey, top part of your tooth is broken. Show an intraoral picture. If you decide to do nothing, because some people decide that, you decide to do nothing, it could break more bacteria into the tooth, the tooth could split in half. Oh, you want to do something. One option is like one of those big fillings. A big filling has the benefit of being easy to do or fast to do and not super expensive. But it has the downside of it doesn't protect it like a hard hat. The other option is a hard hat for your tooth, what we call a crown. Could you tell me if you have any concerns of the things they said of the tooth breaking? Get the patient to volley back and forth with you. Which of these concerns bother you? The bacteria, the breakage, the fracture? It's an awesome question. Don't try to change everything at once. Just say, hey, hey, Kate, let's test out sharing concerns and asking more questions before we tell the patient what they need. So I don't say need in my office. Does anyone say need in their dental office? I don't say it to patients. It's very, we, we hear all the time. My wife, you need to clean up this drawer. I do. It doesn't sound very nice. Okay. You need to lose weight. You need to save money. So what I say is we'll benefit from. So don't say need, say we'll benefit from. So let's say you have a friend that complains about being tired, but they're out every night, hang out, pre-pandemic, go out late. Say, you need to go to bed earlier. No good. It would benefit you to go to bed earlier by not going out so late because you're going to feel better the next day. It would benefit this tooth to get a hard hat like a crown to prevent it from breaking forward. Those further, those are just really good, simple tips that we can use. Great questions here. Um, what I like to do with these guys is make them like sitcom length. Length. Yeah, thanks. Thanks to my team. Are you going to tell? It would benefit you from not spending all your money when you immediately get it because later you don't have any money. Not You need to stop spending money like a crazy person. Um, so... I like to make these 30 minutes in length so they're rewatchable. So we give some tips, share, uh, talk about some growth opportunities. These are two areas where I really would practice patient communication, clear liners and implants. Awesome growth opportunity for dentists. Um, this is my nine magic words. Uh, when someone's missing a tooth, I say tooth above it falls down, tooth behind it tips over, bone shrinks and other teeth break. If you want to get a nine magic words card, uh, my team can share in the chat how you can do that. We can send you uh, a copy of it. You can laminate and put it next to your desk. I encourage you to keep working out your case acceptance muscles little by little. You get bigger weights each day. Don't try to do a $50,000 treatment plan the next day. Just start talking about more everyday dentistry, small, medium, and large cases. And I just wanted to share one more thing with you guys. Um, one of the things I'm super excited about doing is the Dental Notch Supreme. Some of you guys are already members. I have the shirt on. So what this is going to be is so many awesome toppings for an amazing price where you get live CNTV. We have a digital photography course this week. We have veneers the next week. We have all kinds of awesome courses. You get access to over 100 hours of on-demand content. If you miss a course, you can get to watch it later on demand. I'd love for you to have pick up your phone and be able to learn at any time. To have nacho flicks up and learn about case acceptance, sleep apnea, team management. We have over 100 hours on there. Would love for you to be a part of it to help you increase success, decrease stress, and most of all, reduce the number of times you feel like crying inside a day. Um, so if you guys have any last minute questions, I would love to answer them. Some of the things I think or I believe in is not too much at once. A nice 30 minute talk, not too much at once. Keep shooting your case acceptance shots. Build up your core. I'm just so yesterday, I presented treatment, $20,000 worth of that treatment, people said no to. $50,000, yes. Seven different patients, medium sized cases. So I focus on that 50. That's awesome. I get to help those people. The other people, just not right now. As we wrap up, do you ever get a patient who gets very overwhelmed by all the choices? They're not sure if they want to spend the money. They want to ask their wife. They want to ask their dog. Has anyone raised their hand if they get patients that just seem overwhelmed, no matter how many times you use the words? Uh, it happens to me. Raise your hand if you have overwhelmed patients with decisions in your office. Do you want to know what to say to those patients to finish up those consults? So yesterday, people told us, not right now. People told us, yes. 
But some people go in the middle and they keep talking. So just say this to them. Hey, it's a lot to think about. If you don't have any other questions, I'll be happy to answer their questions. When you are ready to move forward, I will be ready to help you. When you are ready to move forward, I will be ready to help you. So let us know at any time. When you're ready to move forward, we will be ready to help. Just reach out to us. It's a great way to get out of the room, to wrap up that consult, because sometimes consults can blow up your entire day. I know we have some dentists here many years. You could be in a consult where people are asking question after question after question. So really enjoy doing these Ask Dr. Nacho Anything. I hope you guys want to sign up for the Dental Nacho Supreme. Um, I'm going to do a quick Facebook Live before we leave. But if, uh, if you guys have any last minute questions in the chat, feel free to share and we'll be glad to answer them. I'll let my team share a little more about Supreme and hope to see you guys at the next one. Well, I got a good question before that. Can you think of any reason why we shouldn't start this next week? Um, I think you should start right away with all these tips. If you need, you can text me. I know who this person is. You can text me if I'm not getting your question right. But can you think of any reason we start this? I think you start immediately implementing strategies to communicate uh, better. You'll have more fun, uh, be more productive, help more with more patient-centered care. Great question. 